the reason we split data into uh, multiple tables is hopefully somewhat intuitive. If you look here on the left, we have tables to store just the product information and, and a table to store just the shipper information. And so if I want to look for any info about the shipper, it'd be in the shipper table. I would probably not find it in the customer table or the employee table. Anyway, so we break these things into tables, and we'll talk a little bit about normalization theory later as the course progresses. But for now, just bear with me. Um, notice here I've gone back to the products table. And uh, earlier I showed you that we have this chai, and chai is supplied by supplier ID number one. And it also belongs in category ID number one. And let's pick another one. Kanbu. I don't even know what that is, but it sounds like it might be yummy. Um, supplier ID 6, category ID 8. Now, I could simply uh, put the supplier name in here and the category name, but there's good reason why we don't do this that we'll study later. For now, just go with it. If I really want to know who supplies Kanbu, I need to go to the supplier table and look up supplier number 6. So let's, let's do that. Select splat from suppliers. Uh, run the query. So products are on the top because I'm running two queries simultaneously. Uh, the first query results are here. The second query results, which is select splat from suppliers, is down here. So I believe we were doing Kanbu. Let's go find it. Kanbu. Supplier ID number six. So all I have to do here is in the suppliers table look for supplier number six and it looks like it's Mayumi's. Run by Mayumi Ono. Anyway, um, so that's cool but that's kind of arduous what I'm doing here. I'm having to look at the supplier IDs and then visually kind of map them over here and so it'd be really nice, hint hint, if I could get the database to do that for me. Well it just so turns out that we can. And the reason, and the, <coughs> the way we do that is by joining these two tables together. And that's rather simple. We just, uh, instead of saying select here, doing another query, I'm going to need to replace the select with a join. And let's bring this up here so it syntactically reads a little better. In fact, actually, I like to do joins on the next line, kind of. Do I do it that way? No, no, no. I do it this way. And then um, on the next line, oh, I'll get rid of the from. So I'm going to take products and join it to suppliers. But I just can't join these two tables like that. Notice the products table has l several columns. Lots of columns. And so does the suppliers table down here. It has uh, several columns. Let me get the scroll bar over. And so to join it, th there's, a bu there's a few joins we'll examine, but, but the join we're most interested in is the one that will give me, instead of uh, supplier ID number three, or let's go to the top here, supplier ID number one, it will give us, um, let's see, company name, Exotic Liquids. <laughs> Interesting company name. So we have to uh, give SQL Server a little bit more instruction as to our intention here, what we really need SQL Server to do. So when we say join, we also have to say what we want to join on. So we want to join on supplier ID here, where that is equal to the supplier ID over here. So let me um, go. For, notice, one, one, well, let's just say, here, here we go. Sorry. Forgive me. I'm stuttering. Let me just do it. Supplier ID equal. Notice equal and SQL is just a single equal. It's not double equal like you see in other languages. Supplier ID equal to supplier ID. Well, hopefully something sticks out to you. In fact, it sticks out to SQL Server Management Studio because it gave us the red squiggly lines. But basically, it's like supplier ID. It's, 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 that's kind of ambiguous, right? In fact, let's hover here. Yeah, ambiguous column name. We, we've we taken the products table, and then to the right of it, we've we've slapped the suppliers table. And so if you can envision this table down here sitting to the right over here of, of this first table, notice we end up with two supplier ID columns. And so that's why it's ambiguous. It's, just, it's like, well, which supplier ID? Uh, does, uh, huh? That's, that's what SQL Server is saying to us. So we need to be a little more explicit. So I'm going to say products dot supplier ID. I want to join that with suppliers dot supplier ID. Okay, so let me, uh, let's, let's run this query. Notice the red squigglies are gone. Hit a five. The result is one table because a join produces one table. It takes all the rows of the table that are on the left and join them to, uh-oh, 
uh -oh, hotkey. Join them to all the uh, rows of the table on the right based on our uh, join condition, which in this case supplier ID equals supplier ID. So if I uh, let's 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 buy some screen real estate here by collapsing that. Um, so here's supplier ID and here's supplier ID. This supplier ID comes from the suppliers table. And this supplier ID comes from the products table because products is on the left. You can almost see here's the products table on the left. And then right here, this division line, the uh, suppliers table begins. And we see that supplier ID 1, exotic liquids, Charlotte Cooper. Notice we have some duplicate data now. Um, exotic liquids three times, Charlotte Cooper. And that's because this one row. It used to be one row. It is one row in the suppliers table. It matches three rows in the products table. See? One, one, one. So that's three rows. So literally the join just puts the tables side by side and connects them based off our, our condition here. Well, obviously, a lot of columns here. This is a lot to take in. I'm really just interested in who supplies what products. That's, that's a good English or... Uh, non-technical sentence, if you would. Who supplies what products? So Splat doesn't really give me that because it gives me everything. So so let me see. Let's 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 pull the product name. Product name. And um let's what's the what's the what's the intuitive name for the supplier? Is it supplier name? No, it's company name. Okay, so company name. Alright. In fact I'm going to reverse the order of these columns just so I can see that company name supplies product. So hit a five. Ah, there we go. A lot better, much cleaner, easier to uh, take in as a as a consumer, a human consumer of this data. So exotic liquids supplies chai, it supplies chang, it supplies seed syrup, New Orleans Cajun delights supplies this stuff, and so on and so forth. Ah, uh, I, 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 bear with me if you will. I have to throw an order by in here. Notice the data is kind of ordered by the company name again. It's not guaranteed unless you actually say order by. I mean the the database is free to do what it wishes to in order to optimally produce the data that you're searching for. But I want to be explicit. So order by company name and then by product name and run it. And now we have here okay these are definitely in order and then the product names are in order within their companies. So so that's kind of nice. Anyway, uh, that's, that's a basic join. It's called an inner join. I'll talk about the details a little bit later.